any such feature would be good only in conjunction with a good will. So, for example, take something like intelligence. Well, intelligence is fine and good for most people, but when we attach intelligence uh, to an evil will or with a criminal personality, well, then suddenly intelligence isn't a good thing at all. In fact, it makes the criminal probably worse or harder to capture or more effective in, in executing his criminal plans or whatever. Right? And so there again, we have the same result, that intelligence isn't always good, and so isn't good in and of itself. It's, it's uh, possible that intelligence actually increases the disvalue of something. Okay? Intelligence makes the criminal mastermind worse, not better. And so Kant uh, famously says, no matter what f personality features we can imagine, well, none of them, none of them is good in and of itself. Only a good will. Okay? A good will is the only thing that's, that's valuable in and of itself. Now, early on in the groundwork for the metaphysics of morals, Kant is mentioning this point about good will, and he, he says, well, wouldn't it be strange if happiness were in fact the end of, of humanity, if that were somehow our purpose in life to be happy, if that were somehow the end-all be-all of, of morality, of humanity. And he says that would be strange because we seem so naturally ill-fitted for attaining it. Right? There are so many of us who uh, struggle to be happy but, but fail. Happiness seems to be one of those things that we all want, but, but uh, nevertheless, we're not terribly good at getting it. Okay? And so Kant is saying, look, if, if we were naturally built to get happiness, then we would surely be better at it than in fact we are. Right? Conclusion, happiness must not be our natural end. Now, what we do have by nature, Kant says, is a faculty for reason faculty for practical reason. That is, an ability to judge for ourselves how to act, ability to determine our own wills, and the ability to contemplate the actions that are available to us and to choose one uh, freely. And so Kant's idea is, well, perhaps the idea of our creation, the, the, our purpose, our essence, our, uh, our being, must consist rather in uh, uh, using our reasoning powers to uh, create in ourselves a good will. Happiness doesn't seem to be the sort of thing that we are naturally fitted to attain. But reason, in as much as it is natural to us, seems to be the sort of thing that we might use to achieve the thing that really is good, which is a good will. Okay, so that's, that's the picture that Kant uh, offers for us, and I think he um, presents an interesting alternative to Mill and to other consequentialist views. Okay, <clears throat> so finally now, I want to say a word about uh, what a good will consists in. Okay. We know some... We know uh, if we follow Kant, if we believe Kant, well, we know that a good will is good in itself. It's the only thing that's intrinsically valuable. But we don't really know much about what it is to have a good will, beyond maybe some vague sense about, about uh, good intentions or meaning well. But we'd like to know certainly more if we're doing some kind of philosophical analysis. We'd like to know more about, about what it is or how to, how to attain a good will. And here Kant says something that's become notorious. Um, it's one of these points of Kantian ethical theory that are sometimes hard to defend, but certainly there are lots of Kantian ethicists still around, and they, and they do their best to, to defend him on this point. But what Kant says is that a good will is a will that acts only ever f out of a sense of duty. Okay? That is... If I'm really being a, a, a good agent, if I'm really being uh, 
an ethical agent, a moral person, if I'm really being good, then my motivating influences, what, what, what determines my will, the reasons for my actions, must always be my acknowledgement of ethical duty or obligation. Now that's notorious because it would seem, intuitively, that there are in fact lots of other perfectly acceptable motivations for my action. So for example, uh, if I am motivated by sympathy to give alms to the poor, or if I'm motivated by, by love to uh, send money to my my children when they're when they're um, in need of, of money. Um, those would seem to be good candidates for moral actions. It seems to be a fine thing to give to give money to the poor or to uh, 